I want to welcome you to week three of a study in 2 Corinthians. You know, it just seems like yesterday that we started an in Him scripture study, but that was two years ago almost. June 21st of this year will be two years that we started this in Him scripture study. And then it, they went, we went through Romans and 1 Corinthians, and now we're in 2 Corinthians. And I'm just thrilled to see what God is doing with this podcast and and where he's opening doors to see it. Just I'm talking about just encourage people, help people, and strengthen people. This is something that that I, I had dreamed about for a lot of years of what God was going to use me to do, but I had no idea how he, what he was going to do or how he was going to do it. But today I see why that five years ago he told me to start a podcast. I had no idea. There's a lot better preachers out here, a lot better speakers, a lot more smarter people, a lot more theologically smart people out here. But he chose me to do what I ha- he has anointed me to do, and that is to lift people up and teach them who Jesus Christ made them to be. And I'm thrilled to do it. I'm thrilled to do what God has called us to do. And this this week, this is, like I say, this is week three. And it, it just seems like yesterday that we started on that In Him Scripture study. And it, it's just, it's amazing what God has done since then. And I want to, I want to thank all the partners of this ministry. Partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give his love away all over this planet, to give his word away all over this planet, and teach people what God says about them and not what religion says, not what their what their track record says, their mistakes, and all the junk that has, has clogged up their life. No, to teach them what Jesus Christ has made them to be. And partners, you've got a major part in that. Thank you. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return on everything that you sow in this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner of this ministry, I want to encourage you. Go to the website and take a look at all the resources that these partners are helping us give away. We, we've got a big presence on YouTube Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the podcast is going out. I'm talking about all over the world. It's it's touched every continent, and it and it's because of the partners that that so into this thing to help us keep it going. God, I'm talking about God has laid it on people's hearts to help this ministry go around the world. And if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. So into this ministry to help make the difference that this that God has made through this podcast, through this ministry in jails and prisons, churches and ministries all over this planet. And it, I, I'm going to say this, that God has opened a lot of doors for this ministry. And I can say, I don't know how in the world it got done except to say he done it all. He done it all. And I thank God for it. So, I thank you for tuning into this podcast regularly and listening. I want to encourage you to download this phone app and get hold of what this ministry is doing six days a week on this podcast. That phone that phone app is free, and you can download it free of charge. You can have this podcast automatically downloaded to your phone six days a week. Glory to God. Glory to God. I call it a privilege. I count it a privilege to be able to do these prayers every day on this podcast. Monday through Friday, Paul's prayers for the Ephesians, we go through them, and we want you to go through them with us so that you can find out and understand that that I want the same for you that, that Paul wanted for the Ephesians, that, that, that you come to realize and understand just how much God loves you. The world, I want the world to see that. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. 
I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church, and the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his Spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your heart as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him and the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God. He has opened my eyes to that love. He does it more and more every day, and he does it through his word. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus, holy name I pray. Amen. Now, we're going to be in 2 Corinthians 2.14 today. And this is, this, is a, this is a verse that just I'm talking about. It, it it will it will strengthen you. It'll lift you up. It will it will excite you if you let it. it let me read it. Second Corinthians two fourteen in the King James says, "Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and makes manifest the savor of His knowledge by us in every place." And now that's just pretty much self explanatory that God causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. But that's the whole that's the old Sarah scenario of why we're doing this study. Why we've been doing it since June twenty first of two thousand twenty one to teach people what they can do, who they are, where they stand in him. What you can accomplish in him is far more than you'll ever realize. Let me read the, the New Living Translation. It says but God, he, he has made us captives and continues to lead us along in, in Christ's triumphal procession. Now he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. Wow. Let me read the Amplified Classic. It says, but thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us to triumph as trophies of Christ's victory and through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. That what are we doing? What, are, what, are, what is our goal for life? Well, th- this verse says that we are triumphant in Christ Jesus. But why are we triumphant in Christ Jesus? Why, why does God want to let us know that we're more than conquerors? In Him, we're more than conquerors through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why does He want us to know that? Why? So that we 
can, can spread the good news of Jesus Christ all over this planet, and people can see what he is doing in our lives and want it for their for our set for for their selves. What does the new living say? But thanks, but thank God he has made us his captives and continue to lead us along in Christ's triumphant procession. In other words, we're we're in a parade. I'm talking about triumphant parade. People are seeing what we, what's going on in our lives and wanting what we've got. It says, now he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. That is our jobs. That is what we do. Now, you may not like this, but this is just the, the way it is. I, I, I say this all the time. I've never saw a, sh- a shepherd bear a sheep into the fold. It, it's, it's physically impossible for, the, for a human being to birth a sheep into the fold. Now, that's just a carnal way of saying what I'm about to say. But it is not a pastor's job as a pastor to bear sheep into the fold. It's his job as a Christian to bear sheep in the fold because he is a Christian. He's a sheep, but his job as a pastor is to lead them and feed them. So if it's his job as a as a as a born again Christian to see people born into the family of God, it's everybody's job as a Christian to to get out here and win people to Jesus Christ. Their Lord and Savior. Now, look. This is this is what uh, what we, what I want you to realize. The King James Version of Second Corinthians two fourteen. It says, "Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and makes manifest the savor of of His knowledge by us in every place." In other words. What does it? What what does God want us to do? He wants us to get out here and show people what He has done for us, so that they can come to the realization and the understanding that He'll do it for them. He wants us to be that light that sits on a hill that cannot be hid, cannot be hid. And so many times, Christian people are living. Are living far below their standards. God wants God wants to see them. I'm talking about victorious in every area of their life, but yet they 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 stagger, they stumble, they worry, they they fret about where they stand. Why? There's no rhyme or reason why. Yeah, I'm telling you, there's no reason why anyone should ever not know where they stand with God. But you make mistakes. You say, I make mistakes daily. Hey, everybody does. But I'm going to tell you what you have have got to come to understand and know. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, according to Romans 3.23. I've heard that all my life. Uh, We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Absolutely. But read the 24th verse. The 24th verse says, being justified freely by God's grace. God's unmerited favor through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. He said, yet Paul said, yes, we're going to all sin. We all make mistakes. He said, I'm the chief of all of them. He said, but guess what? We've been justified freely by the unmerited favor of God through the redemption that Jesus Christ died to give us. And when you start getting hold of that, that, that hey, I'm, I'm residing, I am firmly planted my roots are planted in Christ Jesus, and I'm going to stand here, and I'm going to make sure that everybody around me knows where I stand with him, because the, the stronger I become in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the more of a light I can be to the world around me. I'm telling you, we can sew this thing up and go home to live in, in God's kingdom for the rest of, uh, rest of eternity. But we've got to be about the Father's business, seeing people's lives change, seeing their lives change. Why? 
because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he's going to win the world through us. The, the, the people that have not been born again have, are going to be won by people like you and I, by people that have found out who Jesus Christ has made them to, to be, and, and they, have, they have come to the conclusion that they can count on him. God wants you to understand that and realize that. And it, and, and it all stems from knowing who you are. It all stems from knowing who you stand, who you stand with in your walk with Christ. And you're standing with an almighty God that stands more, more than willing to back you up in everything that you do. Isaiah 52, 12 said, the Lord will go before you. He's talking to the children of Israel. And I ain't even going to get into what, what, uh, what uh, Galatians 3.29 talks about, that we're the seed of Abraham, the children of Israel. We are the seed of Abraham. He said, the Lord will go. He told them, said, the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. In other words, it just says your rear reward, but that is rear guard. In other words, when, you, when God opens the door for you, you can walk through it, and you ain't got to be looking over your shoulder to, to see what's slipping up on you because God's got you back. He's got you back, and he'll walk through life with you if you'll allow him to. If you'll help, if you will let him help you come to the knowledge and realization of where you stand in the whole scheme of things. In God's plan, where do you stand? You are triumphant in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. You are triumphant in him, in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I promise you, I, I'm talking about, I, I know this just as sure as I know the sky is blue. I don't care how many clouds there are in the sky. I know God, God's word is true above all opinion. I know it. Why? Because I know that he is there. I know what he's done in my life. He's not a man that he's going to lie. Whatever he does, he's going to back up. And I promise you, without a shadow of a doubt in my mind, if you'll find out who you are in Christ Jesus, you'll come to that same conclusion. You'll be stronger than you've ever been. How many, I'm telling you, how many people want to hear and know and realize the, 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 the strength that they have in him? There's a lot of people out here that don't know that. They don't know that they are triumphant in him. They're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, their Lord and Savior. I know it. There, there ain't nobody going to tell me any different. No way, shape, or form. I'm going to walk through this life and, and do what I'm supposed to do, and that is be a light and a help to everybody that I can, everybody that let, uh, let me, and everybody that listen to what God's Word, what thus saith the Word of God, not what their religion says, not what their feelings say, but Him what he says in his word. Glory to God. Now, I've got a question for you today. I've got a question. Are you born again? You know, there's millions of people all over, all over this planet that know know what God is, who he is. They believe in God. I, I hear it all the time in, the, in jail. You know, I believe in God. Oh, yeah, I believe in God. I'm not asking you if you believe in God. I'm asking you if you have invited him in to your heart in your life to be your Lord and Savior. I'm not asking you if you've asked him to forgive you. I'm not asking you anything like that. I'm asking you, have you made Jesus Christ Lord of your life? Romans 10 and 9 says, if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. In other words, if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, if, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. I, 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 I say this all the time. Over there in that jail, I, I want to make sure people get and understand what this is. I said, listen, you know, people that are not, they say, I'm not born again. I said, well, do you believe in God? He that comes to God first, he that comes to him must first believe that he is and believe that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Do you believe in God? They say, oh, yeah. I say, you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins? Absolutely. You believe he was raised on the third day for your justification? Absolutely. I said, you're almost there. 
All you got to do is say, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. I accept what you've done for me, and I believe in my heart that God, that God raised you from the dead to justify me in everything that I've ever done. And I, 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 there's nothing wrong with asking God to forgive you, but I'm going to tell you something. There's, there's, there's everything, everything in making him Lord of your life. And then, then First John comes into play for you if we confess our sins, as talking to the born-again church, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse up from, us from all unrighteousness. There ain't, no, there ain't no place for guilt in a Christian's life. Jesus died to give you freedom from that. Make him Lord today. Confess Jesus as Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Glory to God. Hey, listen. Go to our website. If you're not a partner of this ministry, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom. We're seeing people all over this planet being set free from the truth of God's word. I, I'm sorry, being set free through the truth of God's word. From this world, it's being set free from all the junk that this devil has wreaked havoc in this world over. So go to our, our website. It's the dash prodigal son.com now i want to say this partners thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry helping us do what god has commissioned us to do and that is to give his word away all over this planet free of charge i the lord told me a long time ago he said son you give away what i have taught you and i promise you i'll take care of every need that you have ever had in your life he'll do that he'll do that for you too Help us do what we are doing. Partners, thank you. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Oh, I thank God for faithful partners today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.